This is Warren Vanderhill with the Center for Middletown Studies project on Muncie's faith communities. Uh, the date is December 20th, 2016, and today I'm interviewing Dr. Ann Iliades uh, with Temple Bethel, the Reformed Congregation here in Muncie, Indiana. Uh, I want to make a, a point before we begin because we're doing this interview today in the Helen and Martin Schwartz Digital Complex in Bracken Library. And both Ann and I know how important that is because of the fact that both Marty and Helen were pillars of Temple Bethel for so many years and got me involved in doing research projects on the temple originally back in the 1970s and then again uh, shortly after the turn of the century. So uh, it's, it's an important fact that their philanthropy enabled us to have this particular area at Ball State University. Now, with that said, uh, and I want to go back to the beginning and, and ask you, as far as your own life is concerned, if you would tell me some about your personal faith journey from, uh, since we're both New York City folks, from the, the time you, were, you grew up in Manhattan until you eventually came to Muncie, Indiana. Okay. Uh, faith journey, all right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my parents were immigrants uh, from Vienna, Austria. They were lucky enough to get out and survive the Holocaust. And they put me, when I was born in New York City, they put me into a religious school that was uh, for Orthodox because it was the closest one to the house, not because mm -hmm. my parents were Orthodox. Right. And uh, that's where I got my religious education. And I have to say that um, Orthodox, everything was for the boys then and nothing for the girls pretty much. And so my education was not very good compared to those of my male cousins who got a much better education. My male cousins had bar mitzvahs. There was no equivalent in those days for, for women to have what is now a bat mitzvah in the mm -hmm. reform movement. Um, and we left New York uh, after I was married. My husband had a, an obligation in the military. We we're both physicians and uh, he had a deferment during the Vietnam War so that he could be a fully trained surgeon, which was much more valuable to the Army than a general medical officer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we ended up in, in Georgia. And we were on an Army base in Georgia, and uh, we got there right before the high holidays, and uh, I went to services there, and there's this very young um, Army, <laughs> I don't know what he was, a uh, lieutenant or something like that, and he was the rabbi. <laughs> oh. And so he said to me, well, why don't you come up to the Torah? And I said, well, I can't come up to the Torah. I'm Jewish. You know, I, I'm not Jew I mean, I'm a female, and right. you know, yeah. I, I'm, I've yeah. not been raised to, to do that sort of thing. And he said, sure you can. And so that was my first introduction to Reform Judaism. Right. And so um, I think had I not um, been introduced to Reform Judaism, I wouldn't be very, very active in the Jewish community whatsoever because there's nothing like being a second-hand citizen to turn mm -hmm. you off, right? Mm -hmm. um, so also my husband is not Jewish. Right. He's uh, Greek Orthodox by upbringing, and uh, I wouldn't have had this kind of impotence to, to do what I'm doing. So uh, after we finished with the Army and we both had jobs waiting back in New York, my husband decided we're not going back to New York City and raise our children there because I don't like the big city. So by then we had two kids and uh, he looked for jobs for himself first because thought, we thought it would be harder for a surgeon to find a job than a pediatrician and we ended up in Muncie, Indiana and uh, we've been here 36 years now. Did, did you become involved with Temple of Bethel right about the time you first came to Muncie? Right, I just joined as a member. Um, and I didn't have a lot of involvement. I had small children. I was starting a pediatric practice. Uh, I went to services, and that's about all I did initially, mm -hmm. involvement. Mm -hmm. But as the years went on and my children grew older and didn't quite need me quite as much, um, I became finally a member of the board. And after that, when the president, who had been many, many years of president, you might remember Art Malman, sure, yeah. said, if I, have, if I have to do this again another year, my, my, my wife will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, OK, I'll do it. Huh. Uh, and I signed on for a two-year term, which has now become 16 <laughs> years. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
So you, you really came into your the position that you currently occupy at Temple of Bethel by being involved in temple activities and then replacing Art Malman. Is that when Malman's left Muncie? Well, they left uh, probably a couple, a year or two later. Okay. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. something yeah. like that. But yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, his wife had had it with him <laughs> being <laughs> president for a very right. long time. What do you see as your main responsibilities in that role at Temple Bethel? Um, to keep Temple Bethel existing, right. which is very, very difficult with a, a very small congregation, mm -hmm. um, a congregation that is heavily weighted on the side of elderly people. Um, uh, you know, there are, there's a lot of work involved in keeping a congregation going, and uh, not everybody is able to, to, to participate in that work. Mm -hmm. um, even the challenge of just having enough money to run the congregation yeah. with so few people. Mm -hmm. Because although uh, there are few people, that doesn't mean the expenses are small. Mm -hmm. We have to keep up our building. We have to do certain things that, mm -hmm. that are necessary. Yeah. How would you characterize the condition of Temple of Bethel right now? The condition of the building or of the congregation? Both. Warren? Both. Okay. Well, the building is old. I think 1922 was when it was built, the main building. Uh, the addition was put in around 2000. Uh, needs a lot of repairs constantly, uh, which fortunately we can keep up with. Uh, but we've had lots of leaks you know, and uh, problems with the roof, and you mm -hmm. know what happens with an old building. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, we've managed to keep the building uh, in good condition, and uh, mm -hmm. I have to say that a lot of the thanks goes to somebody called Mark Greenberg, mm -hmm. who has worked more years than I've been president tirelessly taking care of yeah. the grounds, the building, and everything for us to see that things mm -hmm. are going. Who yes. is a member of the Muncie Fire Department? He is a member of right. the Muncie Fire Department, that's yeah. correct. I recall interviewing him for one of the studies mm -hmm. several years ago. How many members do you currently have? We have about 35 member units, and a member unit can be a single person or a family. Mm -hmm. So about 35. Yeah. So if you, if you go back, say, oh, not so really to what I call the Marty Schwartz generation, because I recall mm -hmm. when I did the first research study mm -hmm. of Temple Bethel in the 1970s, they had, I'm guessing 175, 180 members. That sound about right? I don't know. I wasn't here oh, okay. okay. Well, then yeah. fast forward to when we first talked about mm -hmm. Temple Bethel maybe decade, decade and a half ago. And I think at that point they had about 90 members. Is that close? Yeah, well, I think when you look at member units, right. it was probably smaller, but members-wise, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if, so that the, when you talk about 35, it's down from, Let's go back into from, the 70s. From 60, 65 member right. units, let's say. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know the 70s. I only got here in the 80s, so uh, mm -hmm. from when I came, yeah. What do you think are the main reasons for the loss of members, the decline in membership? Okay. I think the main reason is the economy. Okay. Right? There just aren't jobs here for a lot of people who would have been, had they had stores here or things like that, members right. of the community. We don't have, uh, people have shops anymore in Muncie. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of people who are either retired. We have a couple of physicians and, uh, you know, some, a lot of people from Ball State. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the, the other group of people that we used to have uh, as members. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason. The other reason is that I think all groups and all religions are suffering from the same thing, and that's a lack of people's commitment to things like that anymore. Mm -hmm. it, I see it with the churches as well as the synagogues, that their membership is way down. I see it in the Boy Scouts, because my husband is a big right, person with, right. you know, a big uh, worker for the Boy mm -hmm. Scouts, and uh, their membership is way down too. I know the Girl Scouts, I mean, all kinds of groups like this, their mm -hmm. membership is down, because I think people are so busy with other things that they don't commit to things like this any mm -hmm. longer. Other than membership, what, what do you think are the key challenges facing Temple Bethel right now? Well, uh, we're all from different backgrounds, okay. you know. 
orthodox background, right. conservative re yeah. reform background. Right. You know, everybody has a different idea of uh, you know how we should be doing things. What right. how we what should we should be doing? You know, just like in the services, some people say there's too much Hebrew. Some people say there's not enough Hebrew. We, right. you know, we try to keep a balance of things. You know, to keep everybody interested mm -hmm. and involved and as happy as possible. Mm -hmm. So kind of walking the tightrope of balancing yeah. different different backgrounds and ideas, yeah. Are there mm -hmm. still a number of people who are part of the Jewish community here who rather than go to a reform congregation like, <clears throat> like Temple Bethel will go to Indianapolis to say Bethel Zedek? Yes, there, there are a few, not very many, but there are some people in the community who do, do that. Okay. We actually have two people in our com in our uh, temple mm -hmm. who also go down to Indianapolis right. for for more conservative okay. type Orthodox yeah. type services too. But they do come yeah. also to, to well, us. The reason I brought that up mm -hmm. is I went mm -hmm. to a bat mitzvah there a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, and you talk about a thriving congregation. Mm -hmm. and Bethel Zedek is really a very enterprising yes. place. Uh, I was really moved by the number of members they have there, and they seem to really be doing. A good job with their congregation. What what role, if if any, right now do you see for Temple Bethel in the wider community of Muncie? Okay, well, um, we try to help out in various different things. <clears throat> I think the most important thing we have going, um, which is not a, a charity type of a thing is that we have partnered with the Muslim com community for several years now. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, dinners together and programs together, and we try to stand up for each other. And I think this is very important because in the wide world, we know that so many of our people are killing each other mm -hmm. and not getting along. And so we always hope that this is the kind of thing that keeps catching on and growing. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most important things, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, yeah. You know, we also help out uh, <clears throat> Christian ministries have what's called the sleeping room. Mm -hmm. And so around Christmas time, Temple Bethel volunteers to serve meal, to buy and serve meals there and to help out with those poor people mm -hmm. who have no place to live except coming at night to the sleeping room and mm -hmm. getting their meals there. Okay. So we do that every year, too. Yeah. Um, all the money that we collect for charity, we give to the Friends Church Food oh. Pantry, yeah. uh, every penny that we collect mm -hmm. for charity. Uh, so we try to be part of, of the bigger community mm -hmm. and, and uh, work with others. We've touched on this a little bit, but I want to ask you more specifically. That, that as we're both very aware, in the last few decades, Muncie has experienced incredible economic and social change. In what ways again specifically have these kinds of changes impacted Temple Bethel? Well I think first of all is the membership. Okay. I think that's very important you know uh, to keep something going you need to have enough people to do the work and you also have to generate the money to pay for the things that you need to be paid for mm -hmm. and and the fact that we have uh, fewer people more retired people on very fixed incomes mm -hmm. uh, it, I would say for several years now, the money that we budget for expenses and the money that we get in for dues has a wide gap. Yeah. And every year around this time, I have to send out an appeal. Yeah. You know, we need to keep going. We need right. somehow to raise the finances to keep mm -hmm. going too. Mm -hmm. Have members of Temple Bethel that you can think of been specifically affected by these economic changes? As you think of the membership and people you know, are there people who have really been specifically impacted by these changes? Absolutely. Um, we have people that we have to help pay uh, for, for medical things, uh, for eyeglasses, to give food for people mm -hmm. who can't otherwise manage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How has Temple Bethel been involved in the economic and social life of the community over the years that you've been part of the congregation? Well, how is that different from what I just... Well, I guess I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get at this a little bit more specifically mm -hmm. in terms of 
you're talking more about outreach. Have there been any examples of other religious groups in Muncie that may have come to you to seek out your support? I can't think of it off the okay. top of my head. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just not. You know, I think that yeah. this, the Muslim community and ours yeah. was a mutual thing because. Well, I bring it up because when I was interviewing some people at the Unitarian Church, they yeah. also mentioned that there had been some cooperative endeavors between the Unitarian Universalist congregation mm -hmm. here in Muncie and Temple Right. They, they did actually ask me to do a service <laughs> this year at the Unitarian Church. So uh, I worked with one of their members and how I could adapt the Jewish service to a Unitarian oh, okay. service yeah. and, and do a sermon, yeah. and, and I actually did one for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, when they've had lots of things that we have uh, mutual interests in, uh, they had a service when all those people in Florida and Orlando were killed. For, right. for yeah. They were shot by that. Right. bar or whatever they were yeah. at yeah. you know they had a, a ser special service for for for, for them mm -hmm. and uh, we we participated in that service mm -hmm. um a lot of things that they do in terms of the um the the, the world in terms of uh, uh pollution and right. uh, global warming and things right. like that that we participate okay. along to I know this is a tough question mm -hmm. because of the size of your congregation, mm -hmm. but right now, mm -hmm. do you have any plans to develop additional programs to assist with economic and social changes in Muncie? Well, you know, it's <laughs> tough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough simply because we don't have the people, yeah, you yeah. know? Um, I wish we had more people to do some things that we could expand on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, if you can find a few more Jews for me, we can expand <laughs> programs. Well, I mean, I, I mean, that because we have <laughs> more Jews in the community yeah. who don't choose to yeah. affiliate with this synagogue also. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember the mm -hmm. last time we spoke about mm -hmm. this, a decade or so ago, it had gone to the point where I referred to Marty Schwartz's generation as the Walnut Street Merchants. And then at the time we mm -hmm. spoke, it mm -hmm. was that the largest number of Jewish people in Muncie were either in the health professions, or they were faculty at Ball State. That's correct, and we still are. They still are. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and if you have to, t but I, I, most people are retired. I'd say, right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned talking about your your, your work with other churches and organizations in the community. As you look back on these, do you think that these programs that you've initiated have been successful from the perspective of the congregants at Temple Bethel? Oh yeah, I think that uh, our partnering with the uh, the mosque is very, very important to a lot of okay. people. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people who are very happy that we go around Christmas week and, and right. give give you know serve dinners, buy dinners mm -hmm. for people who don't have what we have. Okay. Yes. What role do you think that churches, temples, synagogues? whatever you might wish to call these faith communities, mm -hmm. what role do you think they have in trying to cultivate what we're calling a sense of citizenship among their members, of trying to be involved in the life of the community from a citizenship standpoint? Well, uh, first of all, we, we teach our young. We have them in, in religious school so that we can convey the values, you know, that started with the Ten Commandments right. and right. everything else like that to them, you know. I think a lot of kids are just left to, to grow up in front of a TV set or on their phone nowadays. So I think that giving them a sense of, of what what's important. Um, in the reform movement, we have something called tikkun olam, which is called the making of the world. And it's a belief that God deliberately made the world imperfect and that it is everybody's role, each individual, to do something to help towards perfecting the world. Mm -hmm. And if we can pass these values on to our children, then we can only hope for a better world this mm -hmm. way, you know? Okay. Uh, this is a more specific question. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just thought of this within the last 24 hours. This is hot off the watching TV and reading the New York Times, I guess. In the days since the last presidential election, there have been a lot of reports of increased anti-Semitism uh, in the country at large. And I just wonder, 
if you have been able to detect any of that in terms of a change where there is more anti-Semitism in a community like Muncie than you may have experienced previously? I have not detected anything specifically in Muncie, but when you, you look at all the things on the internet, what's going on on our college campuses, right. for example, or, or other things like that, it's, it's very scary, obviously. Mm -hmm. The only instance of anti-Semitism that I ever detected on Muncie, uh, in Muncie here, was uh, when we first put up the new addition. One day I got a phone call, you need to come down here and see this, and painted on the wall of the new addition was a, a hangman's noose with some lovely words about, you know, hang the Jews, hang them high. Mm -hmm. But since then I have never, mm -hmm. you know, really had anything like that. Um, and it's important to note that addition means a lot to you and your husband since you provided the funds for the addition. Uh, we did it in memory of my parents. Right, yeah, I know, yeah. But So that's the only recent activity that you would comment on in terms of anti-Semitism? I have, anti -Semitism? I have not okay. had anything recently. I mean, I do, mm -hmm. I do remember when I first moved to Muncie, one of the little boys who was playing with my uh, son said to, to me, Dr. Ann, I pray for you every day. And I said, Jimmy, that's wonderful. Yeah. Why? And he says, oh, because they tell me in school that you're going to hell. So. <laughs> but other than, you know, he wasn't prejudiced. He was just, that's what they told him. He was a little yeah. kid, you know. Yeah. But um, I haven't really noticed anything here in mm -hmm. Muncie. Now, maybe I'm blind and deaf. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I haven't, you know. Well, I mean, you talk to other congregants in, in, at Temple Bethel. I mean, mm -hmm. just in conversation. I haven't, I haven't heard happened. of anything. No. Yeah, okay. Fortunately. Yeah. Well, those are the only formal questions mm -hmm. I have, but I want to give you an opportunity to add anything you might wish to our conversation and perhaps reflect back on the years that you have been in a leadership position at Temple Bethel as part of the rather interesting fabric of faith communities in Muncie. Well, I want to say, like you started out, that we're in this place that's dedicated to the mm. to, to Helen's memory, and right. Marty, thank God, is still alive. Yeah, right. yeah. And I saw him a week and a half ago, and he's not doing badly, you know? Yeah. So that we're grateful for that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it, it's wonderful to be in a place that, that you know, will always hold the memories of these yeah. wonderful people mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. That's great, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I've, you know, it's been a privilege for me as well as, you know, busy work mm -hmm. to, to be for 16 years the president of the synagogue. My husband would say it's probably a life sentence, you know. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, I think it's important. I think it's important that there be a Jewish presence mm -hmm. in East Central Indiana, just as there's a Muslim presence or a Baha'i presence or, or other things right. like that. Right. I think it would be very sad if that presence were to have to go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would agree with that. Right. Well, I want to thank you for, once again, for participating in one of our Middletown studies. I really do appreciate it. Well, good luck with it. I hope it all goes well, Laurie. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome.